The graph on the screen shows a seasonal demand pattern for a product over a three-year period. This is represented by the blue line. The orange line shows the same data with the seasonal pattern removed. This is called the deseasonalized data. Ultimately, to forecast demand for future periods, we need to fit a forecast to the deseasonalized data using a method for level and for trend, and then add back the seasonal pattern. In this problem, the goal is to forecast for the next year or the next 12 periods. Because there appears to be a trend in the deseasonalized data, this demonstration will fit a trend-adjusted exponential smoothing forecast. This has three parts. the unadjusted forecast, the trend estimate, and the forecast including trend. A reasonable starting value for the unadjusted forecast is the last deseasonalized data value. In this case, we're fitting the forecast including trend to the deseasonalized data. Because we have a three year long data series, 36 data points, it's reasonable to assume to start with that the trend part is equal to zero because there'll be enough periods for that to adjust to the actual data. The forecast including trend is always the unadjusted forecast plus the trend. The trend adjusted exponential smoothing forecast <coughs> requires two smoothing constants, alpha and beta, and we'll start with a value of 0 0.5 for each smoothing constant. In the second period and beyond, the unadjusted forecast is found by just creating an exponential smoothing model for the forecast including trend. So we take the previous forecast including trend plus the alpha smoothing constant times the previous deseasonalized data point minus the previous forecast including trend. We treat the deseasonalized data as we would an actual demand value because we're trying to fit the forecast to the deseasonalized data. The new trend estimate will be the previous trend estimate plus the beta smoothing constant times the current unadjusted forecast minus the previous forecast including trend. When we copy this to the third period, we'll start to see what happens and how this adjusts the forecast. The forecast including trend is always the unadjusted plus the trend. With trend adjusted exponential smoothing, if we use the starting assumptions that were used here for period two, we're always going to get the same forecast including trend for the first two periods. But if we copy this down one more period, we'll see the forecast start to adjust. Let's look at the values that we see for period three when those are copied down. If we look at the unadjusted forecast, we see that in the previous period, the deseasonalized data point was less than the forecast including trend. So not surprisingly, our unadjusted forecast 
is lower than the previous one. Also now though when we look at the deseasonalized data value versus the unadjusted forecast we see it's still lower and so the trend component captures this and further adjusts the forecast. Mostly this data set of the deseasonalized data seems to be increasing but we do see that between the first and second data points there is a slight decrease and that is picked up by the trend component. If we copy that down we can see that the trend, the negative trend, is almost eliminated because we had one period where the deseasonalized data decreased and then the next period it increased again. So that's canceled out and this trend part is nearly zero. If we look from the third to the fourth, there's a significant increase and that is picked up now by the trend and now there is a positive trend. This pattern can be copied down to the first row where there is no actual value which in this case is period 37. If we were to copy this down one more row what we would find is that the formulas start to reference blank cells. This is because we've run out of actual values. And because we've run out of actual values, there are no more deseasonalized values. Once we run out of actuals, we simply have to replace the actual values with a forecast to continue the series. So we would simply, in the deseasonalized column, reference the forecast including trend and this will keep the series going and now we can copy all of these formulas through period 48. When we do that we notice that <clears throat> the forecast just maintains the most recent trend estimate and that's really all that uh, the forecast can do. At this point we want to put the forecast including trend on the chart to be able to visually compare it. If we right click in the chart and select data and add a series, I'm just going to enter a brief series name FIT and then highlight all the series values. And I'd like to go ahead and highlight the future values as well. Now we can see that the gray series represents the forecast including trend. I'm going to format this just to make this a line and eliminate the markers because I think it might be easier to see. So the black forecast including trend is meant to fit the orange line. The fit that we see here is with smoothing constants 0.5 and 0.5 for alpha and beta. It's possible that we could improve these slightly. In this example we'll calculate the absolute percent error And I'm going to start the absolute percent error at the fourth period. This is just simply because with forecast including trend, trend adjusted exponential smoothing, it takes two to three periods for the forecast to start adjusting. So I just simply prefer to measure the error without these first few periods. 
we're comparing the deseasonalized data to the forecast including trend to see how good the fit is. So we take the absolute value of this error and then divide this by the deseasonalized data to state it as a percentage. We can copy this absolute percent error down as far as we have true actuals, which is period 36. Remember that all of the deseasonalized values from 37 on we're just simply substituting the forecast, so we don't want to calculate errors for those periods. If we average these absolute percent errors, this will give us the mean absolute percent error. The mean absolute percent error is about 2.5%. If we want to experiment with changing the smoothing constants, we can. In this case, we can use Solver to try to improve the mean absolute percent error by changing the smoothing constants. This means that the mean absolute percent error is the objective. It's a measure of error, so we want to minimize the objective. The two things that we can change are the smoothing constants. And the only constraint that we need is that the smoothing constants have to be less than or equal to 1. The smoothing constants actually also need to be greater than 0, but this is handled in solver by checking the unconstrained variables are non-negative box. If we click solve, we can see that the mean absolute percent error has changed slightly. It's slightly better. The last step is to seasonally adjust the forecast. We have a good fit of the black line to the orange deseasonalized data, but ultimately what we're trying to do is create a forecast for demand for this future period. And if we tried to use the black line, it, tr it certainly wouldn't contain the right seasonality. This is a simple adjustment. We would just calculate the seasonally adjusted forecast. by multiplying the forecast including trend times the average seasonal index. To deseasonalize the data, we divided by the average seasonal index. So to seasonally adjust the forecast including trend, we now just multiply by the same average seasonal index. We want to copy this all the way down, and we're able to because we have carried the forecast including trend through period 48. If we right click on select data and add a series called seasonally adjusted forecast, and then add the series value, we can see this seasonally adjusted forecast on the chart, and it's these yellow data points that we would want to use as our forecast as an input to other planning processes.